In 1928, an object of unknown origin was recovered from beneath the shifting sands of Giza. Seven decades later, this device would become the nucleus of the single largest classified operation in human history. This program would push the boundaries of human knowledge and technology forward by centuries and reshape the very foundation of humanity's place in the universe. While its time on the galactic stage has been comparatively brief, there has been no greater challenge to the ancient alien tyrants of the galaxy than the forces of Stargate Command. A top-secret component service operating within the United States Air Force, Stargate Command is headquartered deep underground within the Cheyenne Mountain Complex, an immense, nearly self-sufficient facility. The site houses the eponymous Stargate, part of a vast intergalactic network of such devices that allows for near instantaneous travel between two points in space. As Earth's primary means of accessing this network and the inherent risk of alien incursions or other hazards associated with gate travel, Cheyenne Mountain is one of the most heavily guarded sites on the planet, and the Stargate itself is shielded by a metallic iris when not in use. In addition to its facilities on Earth, the SGC also operates an ever-expanding network of bases across the galaxy. Such sites are responsible for a variety of scientific and military operations. These include providing quarantine centers to prevent Earth from being exposed to technological, biological, or chemical hazards, as well as advanced research centers where prototype technologies can be developed in secret. During times of extended conflict, such sites might also be used to stockpile equipment for use off-world, or to train and coordinate Allied forces. The most important off-world base is designated an Alpha Site, and expected to act as a contingency headquarters for the SGC if the Cheyenne Mountain Complex was compromised. In the event of a direct attack on Earth, the Alpha Site would also serve as an evacuation point for key personnel and a command post for any organized resistance. Command over the SGC and its facilities has traditionally fallen to a major general within the UCAF, but as the Stargate program has expanded and become increasingly reliant on outside funding, the United Nations has pushed for heightened oversight via the International Oversight Advisory, or IOA. The IOA is often at odds with the SGC, leading to inconsistent leadership and, at times, conflicting goals. Nevertheless, the core of the Stargate program has remained relatively unchanged since its inception, focusing on missions of exploration intended to procure advanced technology and establish off-world alliances. To achieve this, Stargate Command relies extensively on SG teams, small elite units who are routinely deployed across the galaxy. The majority of these teams consist of members drawn from the U.S. Armed Forces, namely the Air Force, although other nations of Earth, such as the Russian Federation, have begun to operate their own units. In rare instances, members of alien races have been granted membership into SG teams, often acting as local guides or experts. Often the sole point of contact between Stargate Command and new worlds and races, SG teams are expected to be proficient in a variety of fields and are often entrusted with the authority to execute far-reaching decisions with only limited or non-existent support. Several specialized SG teams also exist, focused around search and rescue, medical, diplomatic, scientific, or combat operations. SG teams are supplemented by sizable garrison forces located on most SGC bases and installations. While these units lack the scientific and diplomatic expertise of the SG teams, they are better suited to take part in sustained combat and often make use of heavier weaponry or surface emplacements. In space, the SGC operates a growing fleet of warships centered around the BC-304, a battlecruiser carrier hybrid which fields a sizable air wing of F-302 hyperspace interceptors. The BC-304 represents the culmination of the Stargate program's efforts to develop a means of protecting the Earth from attack and incorporates a wide range of both domestic and alien technologies. Perhaps most importantly, the BC-304 extends the operational range of the SGC to include planets which have been cut off from, or never included within, the Stargate network. 
Earth's Stargate has been the focus of various programs to determine its purpose and potential since its discovery in 1928. But it was only in 1996 that the first true expedition through an activated gate was undertaken. This was in large part due to the efforts of Dr. Daniel Jackson, who was able to decipher the Stargate's unique dialing system and through it, activate a stable wormhole. Dr. Jackson, together with a team of special forces under the command of Colonel Jack O'Neill, quickly came into contact with Ra, an alien being of immense power who lorded over a population of displaced humans that believed Ra to be their god. After destroying Ra aboard his ship with a nuclear device, the fledgling Stargate program was disbanded and the gate mothballed. Only a year later, however, it was discovered that Ra had been the supreme system lord of the vast Goa'uld Empire, and in the vacuum created by his death, rival system lords now vied for power. Seeking to protect Earth from this threat, the Stargate program was reactivated under the authority of the newly minted Stargate Command. The Goa'uld possessed a formidable technological advantage, but having rarely encountered organized and sophisticated resistance, utilized weapons and tactics based on ceremony and intimidation rather than combat effectiveness. When confronted with the highly advanced military-industrial complex of the United States of America, the Goa'uld were able to achieve only sporadic and short-lived victories. Amidst their conflict with the System Lords, Stargate Command had been rapidly exploring the galaxy utilizing an original roster of nine SG units led by the flagship team SG-1. In addition to Dr. Jackson and Colonel O'Neill, SG-1 now included astrophysicist Samantha Carter and the renegade Jaffa Teal'c, former first prime to the System Lord Apophis. Through the efforts of SG-1 and its associate teams, Stargate Command would acquire and make use of powerful new technologies and encounter receptive allies, most notably the hyper-advanced Asgard. Able to compete effectively with the Goa'uld both on the ground and in space, Stargate Command was able to defeat a number of successive system lords while simultaneously encouraging a mass revolt among their slave armies. With the collapse of much of the Goa'uld Empire, Stargate Command would be forced to contend with a variety of new threats, including a race of self-replicating machines which had nearly rendered the Asgard extinct, as well as annihilating several of the remaining system lords. Despite these new threats, the SGC would continue to expand, contributing to the Atlantis expedition in the Pegasus Galaxy, and even inadvertently sending a small contingent on board the Destiny a spaceship originally constructed by the so-called Ancients. In the Milky Way, the arrival of the extragalactic Ori would present Stargate Command with possibly its greatest threat since the defeat of the Goa'uld. The Ori, as part of a great crusade, swept away much of the Milky Way's local resistance, including the forces of the SGC, Asgard, Free Jaffa Nation, and the last remnants of the Goa'uld Empire. Stargate Command would eventually gain the technology required to fight the Ori on equal footing, but only at the cost of the Asgard, whose genetic degradation necessitated they pass down their collective knowledge before their race became extinct. Even with the Asgard's almost unfathomable scientific knowledge, only by activating the Ark of Truth was the Ori's crusade finally shattered. In the galaxy's last great golden age, centuries before mankind ever dreamed of reaching the stars, an alliance of four great races safeguarded thousands of worlds with wisdom and compassion. While the age of this alliance has passed and the four races along with it, the extraordinary efforts of Stargate Command has proven to the galaxy that humanity has earned the title of the fifth race. The Templin Institute investigates nations, organizations, and factions from alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Do you have a suggestion for a future episode? Let us know by leaving a comment.